It's Jeff Yule, uh, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, Jeff, the Director of Innovation and Technology at EM Duggan. Please make him very welcome. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Um, good night for me. <laughs> I'm going to try to uh, speak to you guys about um, virtual design and construction and its availability and uh, usefulness to project managers. Um, my name is Jeff Elwell. I appreciate the effort. <laughs> uh, but um, So I am the Director of Innovation and Technology at EM Duggan Mechanical Contractors. We're a um, full wholesale uh, pipe subcontractor. We do everything from fire protection, plumbing, mechanical. We have a service department. We have a um, special projects department, design build. Um, we do pretty much everything. Um, I was blessed to be uh, nominated as the uh, this year's MCAA Innovator of the Year. Um, the MCAA is the Mechanical Contractors Association of America, very similar to um, what you guys have. And, uh, and it was really surprising and an amazing, um, amazing thing that I was able to receive that award this year. Um, I'm also a member of their tech committee. I've been in contact construction technology for 10 plus years. Um, I have a focus on leveraging BIM, field, fab tech, and automation. Um, I am a believer in using technology to help us and to automate our jobs and make them easier. Um, and on the other side of that coin, um, I am on a pilgrimage to get rid of uh, excessive technology that we don't need and that is just there for the sake of having technology. Um, another real big passion of mine is customization. Um, hopefully I will nail this and be invited back next year and uh, I can speak on that as well because that's really a passion of mine. Um, so to move on, um, I just want, uh, I also want to say how honored I am to be asked to speak here and um, I really am excited. I've watched most of what's been going on um, throughout the conference so far and I'm really impressed and um, I love to see it. It makes me really happy to hear people collaborating and and that's kind of what I'm going to be talking about is uh, the collaborative process and how sometimes certain groups are left out and how we can incorporate them and while incorporating them, increase ROI, you know, do better on our jobs and increase communication, which is what all of this technology is doing in the end for the most part. Um, so to dive right in, um, what are you doing with all of that information? We have all of this information that we're generating from models. The advent of BIM has brought us more information than we could ever use. Um, I know anyone using Revit right now knows how many parameters we're purging and how many um, go unfilled, but all of those things that are there and the ones that we are filling out and the ones that our programs are filling out and the ones that um, are just built in um, or that we're doing ourselves, all of those things are bringing rich information to our models and, um, and are completely lost when we're tagging things and PDFing them and just deciding that that's enough and doing things the old way for everyone after, you know, the coordination and design team. And even if the project managers are involved and this is targeting project management, but, you know, take it further than that. Everyone should have their 3D model with that information. And if it's something that it turns out that people decide that they don't want, well, we have to show them why it'll benefit them. Um, so along with that, we're still relying on those 2D drawings, um, access to the design model and to a collaborative service built for project engineers is only going to increase your efficiency. And later in my slides, I'm gonna discuss that, but I don't, I don't care whether you're a company like mine of 550 employees or you're a company of 10 or 15 employees, um, there is something out there that will allow you to collaborate in an environment that isn't super technical. And that's what all this is about. It's about delivering the information that is needed and not the information that isn't and, you know, and delivering it to the people that need it the most. Um, and so another thing that I have already kind of hammered um, in the first four minutes is um, 
this cuts down on unneeded and inefficient communication. And this has been something um, that I have viewed everywhere I've ever been and everywhere in the industry. And it's what makes people not want to work together. It's the emails, the phone calls, the, I don't have this bomb, you forgot to do this, where is this? Why can't I see this? I need you to print this drawing for me. I need an isometric view of this. Um, and no one likes to be the person on the other end of that. No one likes to be the person hounding someone. And all of those things can be taken away with a good, efficient um, 3D model software um, or collaborative software. Um, and so to hound on it even more, um, communication is key. And I guess that this is, you know, a great example of how far we've taken everything. And especially in the times of COVID and, you know, the push to be remote and the, the times hopefully for workers' rights and all of that stuff, like what we're going to look for, or not workers' rights, but like, you know, the comfort of your employees. Um, what we have seen over the past three years, we're all communicating in ways we never thought possible. Um, and that is kind of the opposite of how most of us are, and myself included, or my company included, are looking at design and looking at all of that. We're still communicating in the old ways, but while doing all of the other work in a new way. Um, and so something that can communicate that and the whole you know, picture is worth a thousand words adage um, comes in huge here. If you give someone a model and you show them a little bit how to use it um, and it's in something that isn't super technical like a Revit or you know, something that they would have to spend years really mastering and learning you're going to have the best co communication you can have. You haven't seen my heart explode more than when I've seen a project manager, a foreman and a shop manager sitting around and going through a model. Um, it is, I think, the most important thing we can be doing for everyone. We're all, we've all started to make the move to BIM. We've all started to use Revit. And now, and if we haven't, we're using a program in AutoCAD that is going to mimic the things we can do with those programs. And we're able to pull this data rich information out. True collaboration can only happen when everyone has access to a single source of truth. So all of these things that I'm talking about, none of this collaboration that we're doing and all of the design teams we have and all of that is for not, if we're not, communicating that design through its native media to the destination it's going to. And I would love to take it as far as getting rid of drawings, getting rid of you know anything 2D, even PDFs and having a model do the work. But I understand that that is not realistic right now where we're at in the industry. And so what my recommendation is, is to start small and to do it where you're giving backup after backup. So you're not taking away drawings, but you're giving a 3D model. You will see that your project manager and your foreman are going to be looking at their 3D model. I have done some studies just at my place with certain people and we see that they're looking at it about five times more than they're looking at their drawings. And if you look at a high rise full of MEP and all of those drawings, it's a lot more efficient to be fishing through a 3D model than to be fishing through, you know, a paint by number drawing of every trade that, you know, we have to fit in the building on a drawing and where yours goes and all of that, even single trades, it's a lot. So that 3D model, in my opinion, is the most powerful thing we have. And I think we need to make sure that everyone is getting the most from it. The other side of that is that we put a lot of money into these things and we want to be able to use them throughout the entire process. Um, so, oh, that didn't switch my slide, I apologize. Um, so that brings me to my next um, slide, which is, 
all of the choices we have. And I put down a few of them, but we're in the wild west of uh, construction technology, which makes me extremely happy. Um, I hope to you know, forge a relationship with all of you. And once you kind of understand who I am, what I, I, this is my passion and I would, I will try every single software that I can try and I will help everyone that I can help with finding the one that's right for them. And I will, you know, put everything I have into this. And my favorite thing in the world is trying a software. And my second favorite thing is when it's awful. Because if there's one thing that some that us in the construction industry love doing, it's commiserating and talking about how bad something is. And so along with that, um, I put down some of the good ones. Some of them might also be some of the bad ones, but it just, you have choices is my, my point. Um, and right now your choices are incredible. Um, so I'm gonna talk quickly about some of these um, and I really wanna have time for questions. So I'm kinda of trying to go for time, but I'd love to give my opinion on these and to help people. And um, at the end, I will also give my email out because if anyone has any questions about any of this, um, whether you're remote or you're in the room, I would love to speak to you about it and uh, and you know get your opinion on some of them. And you know, I think that's the best that we can do is to come together and find out what works for all of us. Um, but along those lines, um, my favorite for people that are not used to viewing a model is Procore. Um, I don't know. I know that the design portion or the BIM portion rather hasn't been out for super long. It's been about two years. Um, I love it. You set it up in a way that takes a little bit of time, but when you do set it up the correct way, um, it works incredibly. You'd be able to click into a 2D sheet, which is just what we were talking about, making sure people are comfortable. You have a 2D sheet, you're clicking into the room, you're in, in that 2D sheet, and you're able to be dropped into that room and see exactly what you're trying to see. Um, you can find your location in the building, which with a lot of these is the hardest thing, is flying, um, flying through a building or finding your location within where you want to be. Um, BIM 360, we all know that. I'm not going to talk too much about that, but um, I do think it's incredible what um, a lot of the general contractors and the people that are in charge of these jobs are doing, um, putting them all in a collaborative service. Uh, Autodesk is a clear choice for everything. Um, I think BIM 360 is more of a uh, contractor's software, not really a subcontractor's software, just my opinion. Um, Revisto is my favorite out of all of them, but it's super technical. Um, you can peel things back and make it so that it is usable for someone. If you have a project manager that loves this stuff, they will love Revisto. For running a project, Revisto is my number one favorite um, for the collaborative process. But that being said, the training on it is the hardest out of all of them. And it's, it's kind of for everything it has, it's different. It's more of a, like Revit. It's you spend the time to learn it and then you get everything out of it. Um, Navisworks, uh, we all know Navisworks. I would give Navisworks to anyone who wanted it by a simulate license. If you're not into giving this stuff out yet, but you're thinking about it, buy 25 simulate licenses, give them to all of your project managers, allow them to be on the job. The other thing about that is going back to BIM 360 give as many glue licenses if that's what the job's being run in have your project manager in glue don't they don't have to touch anything be able to change anything be able to see anything you might already be doing that great um if you're not they should be part of that design team same thing with the foreman same thing with the shop um stratus and m suite those are newer ones they're similar um if you're not using either of them we're a stratus shop but they're both um fabrication specific programs, but that doesn't go to say that like, if you're using a program that works for a foreman or a fab shop manager and they're getting the information out of it, the reason I like these two programs is because you're able to customize the information they're seeing. You're not attacking them with all of the parameters they need. They're also built for our industry. So you have something that is intuitive to our industry. 
Um, that's really great for what I'm thinking because none of these are built for us um, besides those two really. Uh, subcontractors are kind of the MEP is kind of the adapter die, um, especially with you know design programs in general, but now with this stuff too, it's, you know, we have to figure out how to make it work for us. Well, Stratus and M-Suite, especially Stratus in my experience, I haven't had much with M-Suite, but they do that. They cater to, you know, the fabrication process, the construction process, mechanical contracting for us, um, for me. Um, and then Unity Reflect, which is, I am a big fan of gamification and, and how I believe that all of the UIs should be designed in a way that is similar to a video game. I know that anyone from, you know, 10 years old, seven years old to what, 60, 70 years old could pick up a video game and at least know how to walk around, at least know how to move, at least know. And it's, you don't have to look at the directions. You don't have to look at, that's what Unity Reflect reminds me of. Um, it's very intuitive. It's built by Unity, which is on a gaming engine. It's all in real time. So what Unity is, I mean, what Unity Reflect is, is it's more of a Navisworks. It's for coordination, collaboration, but those things can also be used to give, if they're simple enough to give someone a look in, whether they're, again, broken record, but fab shop manager, project manager, uh, the field, the foreman, whoever. Um, oh, sorry about that. Less 2D, more 3D, maybe even 4D. I, in my life, get ahead of myself all the time. So this is my get ahead of myself. Um, if we have a 3D BIM model, we need less tagging. We need less, less text to communicate our information. That means less time in design, less time going through the things that your employees hate doing. Um, easier ways of communicating that. I don't have to tag my bottom of pipe height if it's in a parameter and the person in the field is seeing three or four parameters. Um, I don't have to search and search and search for my submittal if my submittal is attached to my family that I'm that I'm creating in a model or it's attached to the program I'm using, it's attached in Stratus. I don't have to communicate that in some other way. I don't have to look for it. I don't have to put a tag on it. I don't even have to name it what it is because I can look at that through the model. Um, that is a huge benefit that I see for this and it's an obvious benefit. Um, context in 3D provides a full view of a project. Um, that's an obvious one. I don't, that goes on the back of the last one. I think that if you think that you're efficient now building in 2D off of paper, you bring everyone into the collaborative process in 3D is gonna absolutely make you the most efficient you could ever be. Um, the addition of statuses, schedules, labor, and costs allows us to convey 4D information through a model as well. Not only are we bringing project managers in, we're bringing everyone else in, we're also asking them for things. Um, we want to have that information that we can pump into our models, that we can pump into our 3D environment, that we can make our 4D model, we can schedule through it, we can schedule, we can pick labor through it, we can see costs, we can con convey information that wouldn't normally be conveyed all within that one model. Um, with a lot of these programs, we're able to do that. We're able to attach things. We're able to also catch things before they become problems. Um, I know that everyone's had their form and say to them, that's not what this looks like out here. Um, that's a lot easier if we're doing that, you know, through a 3D environment that we're both looking at the same thing. Um, and then if we add the 4D environment to that as well, um, we're now ordering from our model. We're not pulling bombs and then putting them into Excel and then we've cut down five or six steps. We're ordering from our model. We're scheduling from our model. We know where every piece in our model belongs before it gets there. We know when it's gonna be there. Um, all of these things, this is bringing added value to your design department. This is also bringing your project manager on things in on things before they become problems that the project manager gets blamed for in the end. There are things that we can co cover before they even happen. Um, you have that the ability to do all of this when we bring everyone into our environment. 
and when we start pumping our environment full of that information. Um, the 4D information is the most exciting, 4D, 5D, 6D, the most exciting thing to me in our industry um, and what we're doing with it. Like I said earlier, everyone wonders why we've been pushed for, into Revit in the MEP industry, at least in my world, at least in the United States, in the world of the MCAA, everyone for a while, you know, what's the benefit to us? Well, the benefit to us is, is all of this data that we're generating that we never had before. And that once it's generated, we're able to use it in a way more efficient way. And that starts with bringing everyone into that process. Um, so I'm gonna finish off here. I, want, I really wanna get to questions that I'm doing okay on time, but um, this is the most important part. So the most important part, and I, I've kind of switched out PMs for everybody else that isn't on the design team, but understand that project managers aren't designers. Understand that the foreman isn't a designer. Project managers need to have an understanding of the design process to get the most out of the model. You don't want them to start thinking that things are fully designed. If they're not, you don't want to make inefficient communication out of things that don't have to be inefficient. So you want to train them a little bit in the theory behind design, what your design schedule looks like, where you're going to be at, because then in turn, they're able to understand and not you know, go into things that they don't have to worry about yet, or that <clears throat> you're driving through every beam on this entire floor in glue. Well, I, and now, especially with the advent of um, cloud design models, where we're designing together in a cloud model, Everyone has to understand that, you know, the design process is something where we throw everything at it and then peel it back and get it to where we want it to be and that it is a process. And so training them the most you can and getting them close to that design group and understanding how they work is only going to help them when viewing these models. Um, roles are constantly being blended. I have project managers that used to be designers. I have designers that used to be project managers. I have project managers that do design. If I could have every project manager be able to go in a model, I know not everyone that I work with agrees with me, but I would love for that. Um, and so this is going to give you a jump on that, training up people and giving them the opportunity to do what they, you know, give them added value and make them feel valued more and know that they can do that is never a, a bad thing. Um, set people up for success, that's with everything. Um, listen to the needs of your users. So <clears throat> if someone comes to you and says, hey, so-and-so uh, from this other company was using a software that I really liked. He let me look around it. She looked, let me look around it. It looked incredible. I'd really like to get them a trial immediately. Like just get them in it. If they have any interest and it's something that they found, they're going to like it so much more than if it's something that you found and you're trying to force it. Um, so that just goes to speak to that. Bring in your foreman. Your foreman know what they want to see. They know what your project manager wants to see. They know what the design department should be doing. They know what the field looks like. They know what the general contractor wants. It's you, Your foreman is your greatest ally. If you can show your foreman a 3D model and have him tell the project manager, oh, have you seen that 3D model in Procore? It's incredible. You know, Have you seen what they're doing in Stratus? It, like I can tell and it's so much better than the drawings. That's going to get your project manager involved and want to do it. Um, if you have someone that's reluctant, not everyone's reluctant. Some people want to do this. And, <clears throat> and that goes to um, my final point after all of this, um, which I'll speak to after the last one. So train and educate, you need to do that. Um, and that goes without saying. And then the final point that I wanted to talk about before I go to my what to look for in a viewer, um, is none of this happens without the people that are in charge of your company, the, the people at the top supporting, wanting this and, and pushing for it and making it known that this is what they want and that they are going to support everyone in learning it. Um, I personally, I drive a um, hundred miles a day for my job. I could work next door. I love where I work and it's because of that. It's because we are told that we are doing something and it's for the benefit of everyone. And if 
if we're going to learn it, the people on top are going to learn it, the people on the bottom are going to learn it, and everyone is going to be in this together, and it's what everyone wants, um, and it's, go it's good for us. It's not tech for the sake of tech. That's what we keep getting reeled into, and it's just we need to do things that are to make people's lives easier because that's what we're here for as a construction technologist. Um, so what to look for in a viewer? This is a very quick list, but I think that this is like the holy grail for me. Um, and I have a list just like this that I always try to go through. So I always 100% need a model tree and I need it to be organized well. Um, the more granular, the better, but not without categorization and having it be easily manipulated by someone, again, that is not a designer. Um, the ability to save and upload views, again, set these people up for success. They are not model people yet. They don't know that um, how easy this can be. So if we can save our views for them, if we can upload some views for them, if they can go into a sheet and click into the model and where they want to be, that's what we want. We want to make sure that everyone feels comfortable, that they are set up for success and that they are, we can, we, and I say we as the people that know how to do this stuff already or the design team or whoever that is, that we are able to hold their hands. If you're a technologist in this industry, I know just like me, you have gone into models at 10 o'clock at night to fix things because you're training someone new and you know they did something that can't be left there for the next day. Or you go in and you're uploading models for people because they haven't learned the system yet, but you need to get that model. This is what we need to do, this is our job. We need to do that um, and really hold hands at the beginning of this. Um, ease of use, again, goes without saying. Properties, perimeter filtering, you can't do this without it. We want to be able to see just what we want to see. Um, for a program like Stratus that I mentioned earlier, you're able to pick just the parameters you want and have no other parameters be viewed and you can do that by role. Um, there are other programs similar like that. That's, that's immediately something I want. I want to be able to give people only what they need, nothing they don't. Um, a smooth experience, again, goes with what you're saying, what I'm saying. All the information not in your face, that's the same thing. Just be able, if you can peel it back, then that's what you want. If you can't peel it back, then give them Navis works and have them go through all of that stuff, but you have to do a lot more training. Um, and then extra points if it incorporates other information. Again, that 4D um, hill that I want to reach is, you know, if we can start to use information outside of Revit. Um, which is an environment that was originally and still is built for um, architecture and other things similar to that and not us, um, then that's what we need to do. Um, and so a lot of these other programs will give you the ability to manipulate things outside of Revit and give you that companion that you need to make it that program. Um, for us, me, uh, myself and EM Duggan, um, where you know, like everyone else, kind of at the beginning to the middle of that and trying to figure out how you are. And anyone that tells you that they're doing it completely, they want to be doing it completely, but I don't know that anyone has this process down. It's something that we've been hearing about for a decade and we're finally in the midst of it. And so this is our next job. Like the next three to five years is having that four or five, six D model for MEP in a program that is built for us um, and something that's really gonna push us to the next level. And so if you can find something that does that, that's also you know, non-design friendly, then that's your holy grail, that's what you want. Um, and you know, I would implore you if you're starting tomorrow, and I know that we're all in different parts of this process, but if you're starting tomorrow and you want to get your best project manager into, you know, a model viewer and get them looking at these models or someone that never wanted to do it ever. Sometimes I like to give myself a challenge, but if you're doing that, then what you want to do is give them something that is low risk, high reward. Um, if I can build something and a friend of mine says this all the time, if I can build something quickly and get the proof of concept out of it and then give them something better, 
that's better than investing in something and having them hate it. And so what I would do is you have Navisworks, chances are, um, or one of those other programs, or the jobs being done in BIM 360, or you have Procore, or the general contractor has Procore, just give someone access, see how it works out and start moving from there. I have the habit in my, in my entire life of getting really excited and wanting to dive all the way in. And But this is an easy one. This is where we just start showing people what we're working with and, and take feedback from them as to what they want to see and what would help make their lives easier. And then that's when, you know, designers and project managers and foremen and you know, the shop workers and everyone else is they're happy talking to each other and they're not asking questions that are, you know, coming off as annoying or being <laughs> being upsetting or or like, oh, he's always on me about this or this guy never sends this. No, you know, that information's there and we just need better ways to pull it and we need to co to collaborate with everyone in our companies. Um, and to finish off, just to take it further, um, Outside of this presentation, uh, just to give something that I try to give at every conference is um, I am huge into customization. And uh, if there's something that isn't working for you or there's something that you can't find as far as software goes or a model viewer um, or anything like that, make it yourself. Uh, the cost of hiring someone to build a program for you is far less than the cost of most of these programs. Um, and the cost of hiring someone that knows how to code or to train someone on your team to code or to train someone on your team to make these solutions um, or to work within an API. The other thing that I didn't add to that list is that I don't buy uh, any viewer or product that doesn't have an open API because I want to manipulate it and make it work for me. And that goes into talking about how I know I've said a couple of times during this, how things aren't catered to, towards our industry yet, and we've kind of had to adapt to them. Um, I think that we're able to do that much easier if we're doing it for ourselves and customizing and taking what we need rather than just taking what's out there. Um, every program that I had on there, I believe, except for Trimble Connect, had, um, has an open API with Trimble Connect might, but I don't know. Um, and then you can take that to the next level. You can pay someone to make a side program for you that's going to do everything else for cheaper than it would be to buy the program that you know does it all already. So that's just uh, my pep talk to everyone that sometimes feels like that none of these programs are really doing what we want. Well, we have the ability to do that for ourselves if we really want to. And I, I think that's where we're all going. So, um, but anyways, uh, I'm gonna take some questions, but I'd just like to say thank you again. I really appreciate being invited. I plan if I did pass the test to be back next year and come uh, visit Australia, I've never been. Um, and I also being from Boston, Massachusetts, hope that everyone could understand what I was saying. <laughs> because sometimes that's a problem even with people that are you still listening to me all day? So, oh, heard, heard, heard loud and clear, uh, Jeff. And uh, <laughs> thanks, thanks so much. And I've certainly enjoyed our conversations in the lead up, and and for your generosity, and you know, uh, uh, being willing to share your email and and out with that with our audience. I, I was certainly it's appreciated from our, from ourselves and AMCA and also the audience, no doubt. Um, and I guess that generosity certainly points to to um, you know, congrats, uh, congratulations on winning. Um, this year's MCAA Innovator of the Year Award, so so well done there. Um, Thank I guess you very just, much. Yeah, no problem. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can get you out in person next time. So that'd be fantastic. I'll be um, there. Yeah, as the world opens up. So I guess just you know, I think just uh, I guess from my side, just pointing out a couple of key themes there, and really a balanced view on on software. And you know, I think that's quite a um, a, a, a complex thing for a lot of organisations and people to work through. You know, in terms of understanding. Um, software, you know, what's the right application for the right uh, process and, and, and that type of thing. Um, but then really also just, you know, understanding how to make all this work with the project managers and getting them on board. Um, I guess, have you seen, um, what, what was the initial appetite for the, for the project managers and foremen to get involved in this process? Was there a little bit of hesitation early on were, were, was, or was there a, uh, a difference from some to the others? Was there a fear about 
um, being, you know, using software and learning new software? Or, you know, do you guys then, um, do, do you sort of see them each with an iPad in their hand, each person having access? Or is it more a central kind of on, um, position on, on site that, that all the PMs and foremen can go to, to one person sort of thing? Yeah, great question. Um, I'll answer both. I'll answer the first one. Um, so the appetite, um, it's different for everyone. Uh, I believe we have about 30 to 40 project managers and, um, and, you know, especially with them and the foreman, you have many different age ranges, you have many differing um, experiences with technology. Um, and so it is very different, but I was very surprised and the people that I, the work above me were very surprised with how enthusiastic people were about it because once they see what they can actually see, they realize that that's what's been missing almost. Um, it becomes that, you know, all of the information that they got frustrated that they couldn't get right away is there at their fingertips. And so being able to have them use it and my, in my experience that if you have that difficult person that also you know that you can warm up to and get to learn a little bit, um, show that person first, you know, and then if, you know, that person that everyone knows doesn't really love it, you know, starts talking about it. It's all about that. It's all about having the buy-in from the people that are respected and then it goes down the line. Um, but I've always been, I've always said, like, I think that number one, the foremen are the most enthusiastic about anything you're giving them to get make their lives easier, especially because the, the thought isn't always with them when it comes to design and modeling and 3D models. Um, and so, yeah, it's very, I, I mean, I'm always amazed, but you know, I think a lot of the time it's the people outside of those groups that think that that it's going to be a lot harder and myself included that think that the pushback's going to be more or that people don't like change or that you know and then once you do it you're kind of pleasantly surprised um just a quick one like yesterday i was on the phone with someone talking about um on a, in a meeting and they just it was one of my the foreman at my company and he mentioned how much he loved procore which we implemented three years ago and i could have you know, jump through the ceiling. I was so happy that a foreman was, he, he's an older guy. He, you know, loves his 2D drawings and he loves a 3D model now. And it's just, it makes me so happy. And, and that's what I'm trying to convey is that there's no one that's not gonna like it if they see it and understand what it is because that's what the information that they're so frustrated they can't get, that it's all there, you know? And the ability to pull it is what you make it, but you know, and the second part of your question. Um, so for us, 20, right around 2014, 2015, we started everyone with iPads. Um, so the field has iPads, the shop has iPads. Um, we have screens in our entire shop. We have, um, so, and then we have a central location in like kind of what our foremans are, are that central location. Um, so they have their shop, they have their, their trailer, they have their room. Um, and everyone kind of collaborates there around a single machine or they give their directives there around a single machine and then people have their iPads. Um, what we've started doing now that we've started um, getting into more of these 4D processes is we do have some um, gang boxes that have dedicated computers and, and computers, uh, 40 inch monitors and you know backup batteries and Wi-Fi connections and all of that so that um, we are able to move those around site and have them where people are building because my goal is, you know, actual paperless. I, I don't, I want it to be done and over with. Anytime I have to print as a construction technologist, a little piece of me dies. Yeah, absolutely. Um, just, just to, uh, you know, just maybe for those, I, mean, I think most people here probably know what 4D is, but, you know, is that effectively, uh, you know, adding time and scheduling and, yeah, so I kind of throw 4D into anything that above 4D because it used to be like 
I don't know, 10 years ago, we were talking about how 4D and then it turned into that we were going to have 5D and 6D. And so I just, you know, sometimes I hear people call it 7D because it's just, it has to incorporate everything. Yeah. But yeah, so 4D is technically, I believe, just time and scheduling. Um, but beyond that, um, more so, you know, time scheduling, um, even taking it beyond that to the lifespan of the building. Um, real benefits that we've seen that I didn't, you know, originally think of is like the ideas that you're getting from project managers, because now they have access to this information um, and this data rich model that, I mean, they knew it existed, but they didn't really understand how much was actually in there. So, you know, you think about like, we have, we don't really think a ton about it, but owners are always thinking about their asset management systems in these buildings and how we're going to do now in the United States, we have COBE, um, which is the government's parameter um, that they're going by. And, and so all of these things are lending themselves to, you know, pushing it further. So 4D is scheduling and time, you know, 5D, if we're going to be able to put cost information and, and, labor information and be able to um, have all of that in there. And, and I mean, my goal with everything always is, is the lean engineering principles where I want to be able to look back at as much information and estimate my next job more efficiently. And, you know, I can only do that if I have access to that information and my project managers are also adding to that. Like I said earlier, you know, it's, uh, if you're giving people access, you have to also ask them to put in some of their information. And so yeah. that's where really we're going to benefit from it. And all of those Ds are uh, parts of that process. Yeah, sure. I might, um, rather than controlling the microphone, see if there's any questions in the audience. Um, I think we're good. We Any online, Alana, there? No, and um, I do have one more, actually, Jeff. And just in terms of um, getting the PMs, actually, before I do, I'll just say a warm welcome to to some of our students um, through AMCA. We've got some project managers, project management students, and and some drafting students um, attending today. So a warm welcome to them, and you know, hopefully they get some some good insight from from this particular session. Um, but just in terms of um, the getting the PMs involved in the design process, is that is that sort of a, a schedule thing where you'd set up, you know, dedicated scheduled meetings, or is it more a sort of a, a loose thing where you know, you know, it's um, it's sort of more um, on the fly between the designers and the PMs getting involved in that process early? Sure. Um, the the first thing I'd like to say to the students is also hi, um, and also kind of if I was if. If I wanted you to take away one thing from this as someone that's, you know, kind of, I consider myself just having gotten in the industry, even though it's been 10 years, we all like to pretend we're young still. Um, but I think that the greatest benefit, and this falls in with all of it, is learning every role that everyone else on your team is doing. Um, you should know what the plumber is doing, what the, the pipe fitter is doing, what the fire protection installer is doing. You should know what the foreman needs to do. You should know the design process. You should know if you're a designer, you should know what the project managers do. Um, you should know what the, the field's doing. Um, it's only going to benefit all of us. And in the future, I assume that that's just going to be blended even more. Um, so to answer your question better, um, I think that it's kind of both of those things. So I want my I want everyone to always be collaborating and talking and understanding what the other person's doing from the other department. Um, I know that we're all in the same company, but a lot of times we have a habit of treating it like we're in five different companies. Um, you know, the fab shop, the field, the counting, the design team. You know, um, and so what what I would say to that is is you always are gonna train whatever software you're gonna teach. So within that training, you're gonna give them not only the ability to use the software, but also the ability to understand what they're looking at. And that's gonna be a part of that, right? And so then the second part of that is you don't wanna, they don't care about how they're designing it, but why they're doing some of the things they're doing and being able to translate that and explain it 
in accordance with the job life cycle and why things are going on and how they're working and what you're doing to coordinate floors. And, you know, right now, level five isn't clashed, but it is drawn. So you can look at it, but I don't want to hear about, you know, every the, the hundred clashes I have because that's next week's job. Like I'm not, you know, those things are things that while we're training a software, we also need to train the theory behind it. Like we always do. Um, and then just like I said to earlier, you know, in my corny address to the students, like I, I just think that that everyone should know everyone's job and I don't know everyone's job, but I'm trying, you know, I'm trying to learn. And as someone that in certain things is, it's tough, you know, when you're respected in doing certain things, you don't want to look, you know, like you don't know what you're doing and other things sometimes, but you don't. And so that's the only way that any of us are going to get better. And it's also like, I've talked a lot about how us as technologists can, because that's my role, how we can help. But like, it's also on the project manager to, you know, grab it by the horns and, and do what they need to do to get the knowledge that they need to be in these programs as well. Um, and again, I mean, the proof is in the pudding. It's just, you're, you're not gonna be disappointed. You're going to see the benefits of it, you know? And so that's, uh, and everyone's gonna be so much happier that they don't have to be upset with each other all the time. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Well, thanks, thanks, Jeff. I think, are we, are we going for time, Charlie? We probably, uh, Bang on time, fantastic. Well, thank you again. I think just, you know, and that authenticity is, is you know, in our view certainly helps um, our attendants and our delegates and attendees of the forum, you know, trying to navigate uh, through this whole thing called digital engineering and BIM and, and all these uh, concepts. So, um, you know, the more um, sort of, uh, you know, realistic kind of case studies and, and knowledge we can share, you know, certainly, uh, certainly um, appreciated. Mm -hmm.